Hello, I'm Chris Beecham, Managing Editor for Gold Derby, here with Sam Haskell, Executive Producer of The Waltons Homecoming, which you all watched, millions watched last November. Uh, and Sam is now an Emmy winner, and I want to talk about that in a few minutes, too, from a few months ago for a different project. But Sam, back when you were thinking about doing The Waltons Homecoming, that you knew the show was approaching its 50th anniversary on the original TV movie that launched everything, was that sort of the core of why you thought that was the perfect timing? Well, it actually was a wonderful piece of coincidence because I, I loved the Waltons as a kid. And I can tell you that every time, every Thursday when we heard da 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 we all rushed to the living room to sit down in front of the television because that meant the Waltons was coming on. So I had already loved it, but when I found out that the 50th anniversary of the original movie upon which the series was based um, was reaching its 50th anniversary. I thought, hmm, we've had some great success with these period movies. Let me, let me see what we can do about this. And Warner Brothers, where I have an exclusive deal, felt it was a great idea. And two and a half years ago, <laughs> we started working on the rights and going to the family and Earl Hamner's wife is now, Jane, is, is now in her 90s, and they have all these attorneys and people around them protecting it, and I spoke to every single one of them, and when they got to know me, I, I think it gave them some comfort level in knowing that this franchise was going to be protected, and we started putting all the deals together, and then, um, you know, of course, ended up at the CW, which has been an incredible blessing because Mark Pedowitz there has just believed so strongly in what we're doing and, and in the uh, faith-based part of this as well. And um, we've just had an incredible journey um, since we put it all together. So thank you for asking that question. Sure. Well, when it came out, uh, you knew you had already told me months or at least weeks earlier before it premiered how proud you were of it and how good you thought it was. But then the ratings come in and the critical <laughs> response comes in. Yes. Uh, what was your reaction? It's got to be a huge sigh of relief when you when you hear that other people think the same as you do about a project. Well, you know, I can I can tell you this, and I'm sure there are a lot of producers out there who have felt this same thing. But in the beginning of the process, you feel very alone, and um, you you know in your heart and your soul what you think is going to be good and what you think the people are going to respond to. And I I had such strong conviction in the messaging of the Waltons, the, the, the family aspect of it, the faith aspect of it. And I somehow knew that it would strike a chord, especially in these times we're in and looking for something really strong and powerful to hold on to. And I think that family values is something that we've lost a little bit in the journey and we need to bring back. And so that's why I was so thrilled that it did connect. And of course, now everybody loves it. And I'm thrilled. I, you know, I, I have no ego about how many people have jumped on board, because as far as I'm concerned, the more on board, the better chances we have of succeeding. And I'm thrilled that I was able to, to present a dish on the table that people enjoyed and have continued to enjoy and want to have more. And you've won some awards already. Yes, we have. In fact, um, the movie won the Epiphany Prize from the Movie Guide Awards as the best television project. That's everything, series, movies, everything for 2021. And Bellamy Young, who stars as Olivia Walton, won the award for most inspirational actress in all of television. And then we won the coveted Christopher Award for best TV movie um, out of that organization in New York, which you know is a faith-based organization that shines a light on things that are considered in the dark. And they felt that the Waltons put a big light on the positivity of family and understanding, you know, what we were trying to accomplish in terms of how faith leads us into the right direction. And, and I, just, I just felt so wonderful about that. And, you know, it was our fifth Christopher Award. We've won them for several other projects that we've done, but this one was really special um, because of the light they said it put on family. And that's what I wanted to do. You mentioned Bellamy Young. I wanted to bring her up because of all your cast, I think she's the best known going into the project. Um, yes. And why was it important for you to get her and what did she bring to the role? 
Well, I'll tell you, I love Bellamy Young and I have loved her for many years. We used her in Dolly Parton's Heartstrings on Netflix and down from Dover. And that was the first time we had worked together, but I had been a big fan of hers for some time. And the minute that they told me I could get the rights for this, there was only one Olivia Walton for me, and that was Bellamy. So we never offered it to anyone else. We just went straight to her and, and made the deal. And I'll tell you something really interesting, Chris. When the movie aired, Michael Learned tweeted out, Olivia Walton is no longer mine. It is wow. Bella Young's. Wow. Take it, my dear. Take it, my dear, and run with it because you are perfect. And I mean, what better endorsement could she have gotten than from Michael Learned? And I, I it just touched my heart because honestly, I, I never looked at anyone else. Well, speaking of originals, you you sweet talked Richard Thomas into uh, <laughs> being your narrator for for, uh, for this uh, movie, uh, the original John Boy. Uh, Emmy winner for the original John Boy and Olivia uh, uh, Michael also won uh, yes. an Emmy for uh, the Waltons back in the 70s. Yes. Tell us about that process and what it involved and how you, uh, you know, he's, he's done so many other things in his career. I'm sure when somebody brings up Waltons, it's something that's a joy to him, but does he really want to, you know, revisit that? So how did you talk him into it? Well, I'll tell you what happened. I I'm always looking at the ripple effect of every decision that is made. And it sort of drives people crazy, but I, I do, and I, I can't help it. I think about everything. And I wanted there to be a connection from the past to the present. I wanted there to be an endorsement of some kind from the original cast, because I felt like the fans that still watch the original Waltons, if encouraged to watch this new version, would all come to us. And so I thought, well, who better than Richard Thomas? So I called his agent out of the blue and I said, would you put me on the phone with Richard Thomas? I'm about to do a remake of The Walton's Homecoming and I'd like him to be the narrator for the adult John Boy and to do an on-camera introduction. I mean, he was on the phone with me within an hour and we spent about two hours on the phone talking about it and what my plans were. And he said, I'm on board, I'm on board. Just tell me what you want me to do. And it ended up getting such positive response and the press jumped all over it. And it accomplished everything that I wanted it to in terms of showing this connection between the original and the, and the reboot. And we also invited many of the members of the original cast to our premiere and there was laughter and tears and you know i am of the same age as most of the kids that were in the waltons and they were all coming up and hugging me and thanking me and telling me how great it was and i'm going to use them if we can get this thing all the way through to series i'm going to use that original cast and guest shots in the series because i i think that there's an audience for all of it and again when you use that analogy of mine about the ripple effect um, the ripple effect of having the young actors who are now in their, their middle age to come in and play different characters, I think would be very interesting. But um, the, the one thing I want to try to find is a role for Michael Learned, because I'm, I'm a big fan of hers from years ago. And I want to find just the right role to bring her in, because I know she would love to do something with us. And um, I'm going to try to create that for her, too. Yeah, I've always enjoyed her, whether it was that show Nurse or the TV right. movie she's done. She's She just brings it every time. Well, you, you've kind of been leading up to the announcement that has just been made by Warner Brothers, which is the next Walton's TV movie. Tell us, tell us whatever you can about it. Well, we are in Atlanta right now. And you can see behind me in my office in Conyers, Georgia, all the pictures of the cast. We are now doing the Walton's Thanksgiving and it will be on this Thanksgiving. And uh, we already have a script for a third. And um, we hope that this franchise can continue to the point that they'll see that it should be on every, every week. And um, that, is, that is my goal. And uh, I know people think I'm a broken record about it, but I really believe it. And I believe in the possibility of it. And I have to tell you, Chris, I've done a lot of work and you've been there supporting me through all of it, but I have never gotten such a response from anything I've ever done than what we've received on the Waltons. 
And I think people are just so glad to see it coming back and to see it coming back with such a beautiful, talented cast because these people are wonderful. Logan Schroyer, who plays John Boy, my wife and I are big fans of This Is Us, and um, we have loved his character. He plays the, the teenage Kevin in This Is Us, and um, he was my only choice for John Boy. I, I didn't test anyone else. I didn't look at anyone else. I just knew I wanted, I wanted Logan, and so we got him, and he scored tremendously in this, and young people all over the country have been writing letters to him and you know they loved it and and he's great he's great and uh, we have a really interesting storyline for him in the Thanksgiving episode um, I don't want to put a spoiler out there too soon but let's just say there's several girls that are interested in John Boy <laughs> okay very good well the last one aired right before Thanksgiving uh, called The Homecoming and then this one will be Walton's Thanksgiving, right? Yes, yes. Okay. So it's, so it's like 11 months later as, okay. we continue, as we continue the story. You know, people, when they're watching our videos with interviews with people, especially producers like yourself, they love the behind the scenes kind of stuff. Is there a really, is there a funny story from the first, from the first film, uh, uh, either uh, in the production process or but when you started shooting, do you recall a funny story that happened? Well, there are a lot of funny stories about the Walton's homecoming because it was shot in Atlanta in 110 degree June heat. And it was the huge snowstorm that hit the Virginia mountains at the time. And we had to create all that snow and we had to create <laughs> blankets of of cotton over acres and acres of land and wood and there was always something but I'll tell you this this one funny story on the location that we used for the family cemetery you know it was just on the side of a hill so we created this wrought iron fencing and and we put these styrofoam headstones and blankets of snow and rocks and it was snowing during the whole scene and everything and what we found so amazing is is that we did not know that there was a herd of cattle on the same property <laughs> and this herd of cattle was accustomed to being in this part of the the property every day and no sooner than we had finished shooting and thank the good lord that we had finished those cows came in there and trumped it all into oblivion oh, wow wow into oblivion and I thought, well, there's no cleanup over here. <laughs> it's, it's gone. <laughs> and it was gone just as quickly as we put it up. But I kept saying to everyone during the shooting of the homecoming, it was, it was so well written by our writer, Jim Strain, and, and so well put together. And I, I really, <laughs> I really only would say, I need more snow. And every time somebody would come along and say, do you need anything? Yes, I need more snow. And, and we, we did it. And I would defy anyone to watch that movie and not think we didn't shoot it in Canada or somewhere because it, I, I was really happy with our visual effects and special effects teams who helped us create all that snow. Well, I can't hardly wait till November now. That's gonna be a, <laughs> a, a, a nice way to spend part of that holiday week. I well, we mentioned have an incredible, incredible script, an incredible story, and part of it takes place at a county fair, and you're just going to love what we're doing with the fair. You're just going to love it. One quick thing, and I want to ask you about your Emmy win last September. I love, I love cameos in movies, TV shows, and stuff. And two of the people you've known forever, Billy uh, Davis Jr. and Marilyn McCoo, yes. I loved seeing them in the church scene. Uh, uh, toward the end of the, the movie that, that we saw last November. And what a year for them also being featured in the Summer of Soul documentary. Exactly, exactly. It won the Oscar for Best Documentary and their, their album has been in the top 10 for months and they've had a resurgence and we're writing them back into this new episode too. Well, I'm going to tell you something. Next, It's already too late for this year, but next year, Fifth Dimension should be on the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame ballot. And, they should uh, be. They, they should. They, they had so many good hits. Well, anyway, back to last September as we wrap up. Uh, yeah. You've been doing this a long time and you won your very first Emmy Award yes. uh, for uh, Dolly Parton's uh, Christmas on the Square. Yes, tell sir. us uh, uh, an interesting moment from that night. Well, I'll tell you what was really incredibly moving and funny about it is that I just, 
I get these feelings. And this was our third nomination for, for best movie. And um, I get these feelings and I just felt stronger about this nomination than ever before. And, you know, they kept Dolly in Nashville because of COVID. You know, she's like, you know, Snow White under the glass in the forest. They don't want her to get sick. And, you know, she couldn't come out for it. But Debbie Allen was there with me and a couple of my other producers and uh, Hudson Hickman and Joe Lazarov. And, and we were all at this little table. And of course, they weren't serving anything. And I, it turns out we're the first award of the third night of the creative arts. And Debbie is late. And I'm going, oh my God, where is Debbie? And she was stuck in traffic with her husband way off away from this, you know, LA Live deck that we were on. And she got in there like one minute before we went to tape. And even though it was live on tape and they could edit and all that, it still would have been awkward if she hadn't been there. And I said, oh, thank heaven. She said, Sam, what are you, why are you so nervous? We're not gonna win. Look, there's Steven Spielberg. There's Robin Roberts. There's Alan Ball. Sam. I went, well, you know, it is pretty wonderful just to be nominated. I will, I will say that with this great group of people, incredibly, you know, wonderful to be nominated. But she said, stop it. Stop it. <laughs> and when he said, and the winner is Dolly Parton's Christmas on the Square, I just completely fell apart. Her mouth hit the the table we had to drag her up and she could not believe it and then she won a second emmy for her choreography i mean it was a it was an incredible and got the governor's award, award that weekend and then the governor's award the next week so she came out of this with three emmys and i just i have to tell you chris it was such a god thing for me and I, I sort of fell apart during the acceptance speech, but I got through it. And, and Debbie was standing right there holding me, you know, with her arm around me. And it was, it was a real God thing. It was a real God thing. And I think that if I had had my wits about me, I would have said this, if I may share it with you. Sure. At the time we shot that movie, we did not know that it would be screened and aired on Netflix during the pandemic. And when I look at all the competition, and you know, there's some great shows, Sylvie's Love and Oslo and Uncle Frank and uh, Mahalia Jackson, um, great movies that we were up against. But I think people wanted something delightful, musical, funny, um, tongue in cheek. And I think that's why voters came to us because of the time period in which we aired. And Christine Baranski has always said, in every interview she's done, that she did this because she loved the music, she loved Dolly Parton, but she really now says that it was a blessing that it aired during the pandemic because we were able to touch so many people's lives. And I think that that's one of the things that, that probably helped us, but whatever it is, it's all about God for me because I had dreamed of this since I was 10 years old, Chris. I, I had wanted to win an Emmy. And I remember going to Pickwick and you're from that part of, uh, the South that where you know where Pickwick is. And we were going to Pickwick with some of our best friends when I was 10 years old and the Emmy nominations had just come out. And um, I said, one day I'm gonna grow up and I'm gonna win an Emmy. And of course the whole car fell out laughing. And my best friend's mother said, if Sammy thinks he's gonna win an Emmy, he's gonna win an Emmy. Well, 55 years later, <laughs> I won an Emmy. <laughs> well, I know we need to wrap, but uh, uh, I don't think people would know since she couldn't be there. How was Dolly informed and what did she say? I called her the minute we stepped off that stage and she screamed for five minutes because see, she's been nominated many times right. and this was her first. I know. This was her first Emmy and she was delighted. I mean, I think that she was pretty much in the same camp as Debbie. How are we going to beat these other, these other top-notch movies? And it came down to heart and I believe it's about people loving her too. I mean, Dolly is is most beloved around the world. I mean, she's an international icon, not just American icon, but she screamed. It was, it was incredible. And then I wouldn't let them mail her the Emmy. I took her Emmy home that night. And then when I got back to Mississippi, which is where our main home is, my wife, Mary, and I drove to Nashville to give it to her in person because I did not want her just to get it in the mail. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. She was delighted, just delighted.
Well, good luck on this. You, you are the reigning champ in this category for TV movie. So you're going to make it two in a row. Uh, and we'll, we'll know in September, I guess. I'm just honored that you want to interview me and that people want to hear this story and just know that a lot of love and a lot of heart are going into this franchise. It, we did it last year and we're doing it again right now. And I can't wait to see how it all turns out. But your support, Chris Beecham, and that of Gold Derby means so much to me. So I thank you.